Well, hi, everyone out there. Thank you for joining Love at First Laugh, the Green Room Edition. And today I have an amazing kick-ass boss bitch. <laughs> I love her to pieces. She's amazing. She is the creator and producer of OMG on DreamWorks TV, which later aired on NBC, and the creator and producer of the live show and podcast called Don't Tell My Mother, which is hilarious. We want to watch some trailers. You're going to die. It's so funny. So please welcome the awesome Nikki Levy. Yay. Hey. Hey. No, I fuck up names all the oh, time. You know what it is? It's Levy, but it doesn't even matter because Dan, no, Dan fucked it up for me. He screwed it up for me. Dan, Dan screwed it up for me. Dan oh, Levy. Husband. Well, Dan is Levy. And so everyone just assumes it's Levy. Oh, it's Levy. So it's Levy. But it's Levy. Yeah. She doesn't usually bark. So, of course, she's barking right now. I mean, obviously. <laughs> uh, I'll give her a minute if she, shh, she's deaf. She's deaf, by the way. I mean, it's oh, hard no. to tell a deaf dog to stop talking. You're like, stop. And they're, they're just like, we don't, I don't know what you're saying. I, nothing. <laughs> you're saying no nothing word. to me. <laughs> you're saying nothing. <laughs> I don't, I don't care. Do you well, I'm so happy to be here with you. Me too. I'm so happy that you're oh. here. I, I'm just thrilled. I have so many questions for you. And I know our audience, our people here uh, have questions. They always ask, they ask very intelligent awesome. questions. So uh, I'm but, here for the intelligent and the stupid questions. I want them all. <laughs> I prefer the stupid ones today. I, I think I'm the one with the stupid questions. I'm never. sure. <laughs> never, never. Never. Yeah. Never. Mm -mm. Thank you. So uh, I love it because you asked me, should I do the podcast like on a pretty place or like my closet where the sound is better? I was like, pretty place. Okay. You know? So is this, is this pretty enough? Yeah, it's very pretty. I don't know. Okay. There's like a right. plant. And then... There's a plant. That's good. This There's is other good. things to the left, but we're not going to show those. Okay. We'll come no, back we're gonna, right here to Just the plant. a little brief look. Just the plant. Yeah. That's it. That's good. Yeah. You need like, to teach I... me how to do makeup, by the way, please. Oh my God, listen. You look great. And I do Ooh. not, I'm like, I don't, this is like gloss. This is gloss. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to start by asking you a very basic origin beginnings question. So yeah. what compelled you to start producing shows and creating shows? Oh, I will tell you. Um, so I was a movie executive for, for a really long time. And I was working at Fox. Fox I was running this company at Fox Animation. Um, and I was bored out of my gourd. Uh, truly like oh I had God. been like writing and performing and then I stopped because I was working with writers and I worked on really cool movies. I worked on like Frost Nixon and you know, like really great movies, but as an executive, which by the way, I'm not anymore. Thank God as of December, but there is this way I'm, there's this way you're supposed to be like, you're supposed to say things like, you know, circling back and just all this crap that I was like, never good at, never good at. Um, and uh, I basically missed, I missed being creative. I just missed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I missed it. And um, it's funny because I'm doing the artist way right now. And it's like, it's, nice. it's just so fantastic. If anyone else doesn't know the artist way, Google the artist way. It's amazing. But, yes. um, I but I, I, I missed it, you know, and I, and I'd stopped writing and performing for so long to, to do other people's stuff really. Right. And, um, and basically I decided like, you know, I have this codependent at the time relationship with my mother and I was going to start a show like true stories, right? Like, why do we have to create things from whole cloth? Why like people's stories are the most interesting thing I think of, of, about anything. I mean, and yes. so I, right. And so like I was in therapy for so long and I was like, you know, I have all of these and I learned boundaries, you know, little by little. And, <laughs> and, and I was like, I want to work with like brilliant like I would work with brilliant writers, like Academy Award nominated writers. And I'd go to them and say, let's talk about a true story and let's, let's put this show up. And I called it, don't tell my mother. And I will tell you writers, and I'm sorry, people are going to give me smack for this, but we can, we can go to the mat for it. Writers who are not performers are the absolute worst storytellers. Truly. Like they yes. can tell you they rescued like seven puppies from a burning building and then you'll like tweeze your pubes out like what like literally one by one it's terrible and so then I was like and, and not to say they're not great it's yeah. why writers are not great pitchers great writers not great pitchers that's the rule and it's it's often 
often true, right? Yeah. So then I was like, okay, what about like actors that I love? You know, just just people that I thought were talented, nobody famous, and comics that I thought were super super talented. And then it would just give me a reason to be writing and performing and hosting this show. And we put it up a decade ago at a little wow. theater on Fairfax that doesn't exist anymore. And oh. it was like just really talented people telling these true stories they wouldn't want their moms to know. And it was like, if we could own our, if like we could own our, um, like our awkwardness yes, and we could poke fun at it, then we get freer by telling these stories. And then our audience feels better because they realize they're not alone and whatever crap they've gone through, you know, it's, it's not like they're terminally unique. We all have the stuff that we're super vulnerable and embarrassed about. And if we get to actually like own it, well, yeah. like, it's it's just it's just powerful and it's freeing and it's fun and i just love telling yeah. true stories i i love it i could i mean i love it well because that's because they're true they're even funnier it's you know totally. you're making, making up like jokey jokes to me they're not funny if the, my jokes are all based on like real shit that happened to me of course you tweak them sometimes you know to make a stand up absolutely oh you, like, you know uh an extra mile to be super extra but they're all based on either things that really happened or my feelings about something that happened. And yeah. I, I think that that's how we connect because art is really about connecting. It's a, the human experience. We all connect, we're all connected. And uh, with art, just, you know, connect and, and it's like, I'm not alone in this. It's, it's totally true. And I think like, you know, uh, I, I remember I told one of the first stories I ever told that I haven't talked about in so long is that, I fell in love with my therapist, like <laughs> fell in love. Grace, I fell in love with her. She oh, was like God. tall, beautiful Jewish woman. And she was like five or six years older. So it was like age appropriate enough. Yeah. And then I found out when I, you know, after I was like coming out to her, I found out, think, you know, I thought, oh, you wouldn't understand. And she came out to me. Oh. And that is kind of like, that like sealed the deal, you know, because I was just like, oh my God, this means there's a chance. <laughs> And I was like, oh, shit. And she was just, yeah. and, and, oh, my God, just this, cra this crazy thing happened where I was going out with someone from work, like a, a work person, and yes. the person, a straight woman, and the person said, okay, I was going out to, to dinner with Moon Zappa, and Moon said, I will bring a friend who's, you know, really great, and you'll meet her, and she's gay, maybe she can introduce, and she's, you know, has a partner, maybe she can introduce you to some people, and I was like, you know, was young, and so green, and like, sure, you know, and it turned out to be my therapist's partner. Wait, what? Yes, and I, and I don't feel like I should reveal any more than that, other than to say it came up who this person's partner was during the dinner. And I got so scared that my therapist would think that I orchestrated this, even though I totally didn't. But it, it was a really, really weird situation. And, wow. and I was so verklempt about it that when I went to get gas, I drove away with the gas pump in my gas tank. <laughs> and then I had to pay $140 because it came with my car. You know, it <laughs> left the tank. So... Oh, and then I had to tell her. Anyway, all that to say, when I actually told this story live and I wrote it, and you know, of course you, of course you have to change things because you don't want to give someone's anonymity away and all this, and also like just you know. But um, when I finally could perform it, and other people came up and were like, "Oh my God, I was in love with my therapist," and I, you know, or I drove away with the gas tank in my car, you know, like. It's just, it was so freaking. And now I could laugh about it, but I'm telling you, like 15 years ago, it was not funny. It, it was, wasn't funny. Yeah. It was horrible. It was horrible. It was yes. Horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> horrible. But that's the beauty about time, you know, and art, Amen where we wait the right amount of time. And when we're ready, then we can tell the story. I find, I don't know if you find this, like the more yep. I do, I've done this for like 20 something years. Yep. And the you, more are, you are so talented. You are just so thank talented. You. And I'm thank honored you. to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank it's you. True. I appreciate that. Coming from you is like, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I totally, you're my hero. You're amazing. Oh my God. Stop, please. Yeah. You're, you're brilliant. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks. <laughs> I 
mean it. Okay. I don't give All compliments. Right. Like I'm not a compliment person. When I okay, say I'll, I'll take I it. mean it. I appreciate. I appreciate. I tried to look. Um, I tried to look good, but now I just feel like I want to take this off. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Is it hot? <laughs> yeah, a little bit hot in this closet. But you're in the closet. Of course, you're hot. Yeah. Okay, go oh, ahead. I'm listening. I don't even know what I was saying. Oh yeah, oh. I, I know. Okay, so I find that the more I do this, the more I tell stories or do stand up or write scripts, yeah. Yeah. the faster I'm ready to tell a traumatic event. Like literally, it went from like a year to now I'm ready in maybe two, three weeks. <laughs> you know, it's it's so interesting that you say that. Like you almost feel like the refractory period is smaller. Like yes, you, yes. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I wonder why, why is that? Why do you know um, this? I don't know. I feel like um, it's probably about also attitude towards life. Uh, I too. feel, right? Yeah. And like before I would, it would be more about complaining from a place of more like fear and complaining. And now it's more like, you know, this is what life is and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with living this way or dying or whatever life has for me. I am open and okay. And I'll just, yes, and life. Yes. So I think that that openness to whatever has allowed me to not dwell on the anger and the fear and the guilt and all those negative emotions that put you in a low frequency. That you is right. Yeah. I think that's great. You saw, it's so interesting that you just talked about the low frequency because like, Something that I noticed that, so I am married to a woman who does not talk shit about people. Pretty much just, oh. she's just not like that. I don't know what it is. She's like a normie, you know? And like a normie, stop it. She is. And like, and it's, it's so good because yeah. I see she got, she moves through life more like this. I move through life more like this. Yeah. And she's rubbed off on me, you know? And I talk shit a lot less. Now, not to say I don't talk shit. I mean, I, I like I like to talk shits, but yes. but sometimes like I don't. Sometimes like I talk shit less, and I actually feel like I'm vibrating, like kind of like what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's it's just it's like as opposed to being in the muck in kind of a gross. And of course, like yes. I, I talk shit because I get insecure, right? Or I get jealous, or I'm totally, or I want to feel better than someone else. You know, I'll talk shit about my mom, like an idiot, by the way. Yes. You know, like, oh, I want to feel different or better than that, than the thing I grew up, how I grew up or something, you know, or my feelings yes. are hurt. So I talk shit to seem Absolutely. this, yes. but really my feelings are hurt, you know, and now I realize I'm doing that less and that helps me not be in the crap of it also. Like it helps that higher vibration. A hundred percent. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Because you're dwelling in fear. Whenever we do all yeah. those things, low frequency stuff, it's all based on fear. Totally. But when you go up and you rise above that, and I'm not saying, you know, to be right. superior or anything, but you rise, you make that decision, then you're in a place of love, of love, joy, peace, enlightenment. And and and, and I think giving. Totally. Giving. I, that's the most important thing. It's not about it is about us, but it's it's about giving. We're here to help each other. Totally. Love and help each other. And once we understand that, it just, that was my first enlightenment thing. Like, I'm here to love and help others. Okay. I love that, Grace. Thank you. Thank you. And and now, um, you know, every time that I do, like, we all do. We're human. I get angry. Yeah. You yes. Know, yes. But now I catch it faster. It's like, oh, that does, that you're coming from a place of fear, Grace. So uh, uh, chill the uh, fuck out. And, and just like let it go because if you dwell in that place, you get all like yeah, right. And and, and then you start gossiping about it, and then yeah. it just gets really messy. Yeah. And then it just gets really really messy. Yeah. I've been doing morning pages. Nice. Those are good. And like yeah, and like so every morning I write three pages, and like I notice like I'll write my problems or things I'm upset about, and then by the end of the three pages, I've actually solved my own problem of just like how do I approach this differently. Right? Like, what's yeah. my part? What's my part in this? Listen, life is all about choices. We have free mm -hmm. will, right? And there's different. 100%. Outcomes. Yeah. And, and it's like, if, if yep. you know, you have a choice to pursue someone, let's say, right? Yep. You have the choice to not pursue them, to pursue them, to maybe have a situation. You have all those choices. Situationship, yes. Yeah. I'm in, in one. <laughs> 
hopefully it turned into a relationship. I but want it to be a relationship for you. Thank okay. you. Don't Thank hang you. in a situation. Yeah. I know. I don't know. I All think right. it's a well, relationship, but I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I'm never sure. Okay. But that's okay. Did you, did you ask directly? Not yet. Or did, you, or did you say, forget even ask directly, did you say what you want? Yes, we both said what we wanted. Okay. So I think it's implied that we're in some kind of relationship. Okay. All right. All right. I'm not yeah. sure, but you know, whatever. I, it's yeah. At some point, I will. I will address. Right yeah. now, probably, I'm not feeling it's the right time, but I will. I agree. I totally. I no, no. And and time, <laughs> timing is timing is. Yes. Yes. I'm not, I'm not pushing you out of your situation. Thank you. <laughs> um. So, so yeah, so it's just vibrating on, on love, forgiveness, you know, all the, the good stuff, which totally. all religions really, well, religions, philosophies or whatever, they all have spiritual things because our yeah. religion, yeah. religion, but they all have that, the same concept. Mm -hmm. It's about love. Yeah. And I, and I also think like COVID has been such a weird time because mm -hmm. we've just like not had the community we're used to. Yeah. You know, and I, and that's what I think, like, I mean, it's so good that you do the show, you know, because I think being able to create community and, and having people come on here and be honest about their situationships, you know, whatever situationship it is, like it, I don't know, there, there's, it, it, I just feel like it makes us feel like, um, like more of a, a part of something and less alone. And I think it's so mm -hmm. important, especially now, but in general. Yes, we all need each other. Yeah, we yeah, all need each other. True. Absolutely, and and I think art is a way to help other people. Yeah, uh, and humor, well, and comedy, right? And humor, absolutely, because yeah. it's healing. Yeah, always. It's great. So I love what you're doing because it's so healing. And I, you know, what I would love to do, I would love to show a trailer of "Don't Tell My Mother." Sure, please do. So, I keep thinking, like, I'm going to have to kill my mother's dog on Christmas with weed. Our mothers did some things that were great. My mother uh, called me a chubby little whore. <laughs> and some things to royally screw us up. Girls, girls, don't shave your pussies. Just put them in a beer. <laughs> and that is where we get the stories. <laughs> I turned my mother's like family fun times night into like a filthy gay erotic space orgy <laughs> in the early 40s. She would yeah. just keep around until you got married. What a mistake that was. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I was a bad <laughs> And my mother just looks terrified, right? So she's like, <laughs> I notice you've been bringing women home lately, and I want to make sure that you're satisfying them sexually. You know, your grandfather would make me climax every single time I shut the f up, Grandma. Because obviously, all men are born bottoms. Otherwise, God wouldn't have put your G spot up there. <laughs> <laughs> That was all that was all that came out of her. This plan would have been brilliant had she not caught me this so Tell me, I mean, you have like some amazing people on it. Yeah, so I mean, so the live show, obviously we stopped that right at COVID, but then we launched in March the podcast and um John Cryer's company produces it and they've been wonderful. They've been John Cryer from Two and a Half Men, but also of course from Ducky. Um back in the 80s uh, oh, yeah. yeah he's the best um and yeah so we we launched it honestly i was losing my mind not doing live shows i was losing it i was just losing yeah. it i was like what am i doing this is just i had no i didn't know where to put all my energy you know all my yeah. all my angst and so we launched the podcast in march it's like everywhere it's on apple or spotify or wherever you guys pot up and it's you know it's it's great people like um I don't know. Uh, let's see. Constant Zimmer. Uh, Zoja Mamet is going to do it. Um, Melissa Rivers, we're recording next week. I'm really excited about oh, that. Uh, Adam Rippon, who's the best. Emily Hampshire from Schitt's Creek. And basically, just really brilliant people telling a true story they wouldn't want their moms to know. And then we call their mother. 
what? <laughs> and then we call their mother. And so it's so cool because we could never do this pre COVID, right? Like I would like when we did a live show, we could never have fortune and then her mom, cause her mom lives in the South. Her yeah. mom lives in, you know, so this is just so much fun. And so people share things. And the crazy thing is like Constance Zimmer, who's on, um, un from unreal, you yeah. know? Yes. I love her so much. And she's on, uh, she's on a, that, that show right now called good trouble. She told a story about sneaking out the window to sleep with this like rock star when she was a teenager. And then we called her mother, who's this hilarious German lady. And her mom's like, oh, I knew. Well, she's more like, I knew. And then Constance's like, what? And she's like, I knew. Yeah, I read your one page diary. She's like, what do you mean? She's like, I don't know. It was open on the, in the bed. I, I read one page. I don't know. I knew. And it was like, Constance's like, wait, what? So it's hilarious because people are people are realizing their mothers knew things that they didn't even that they thought they'd kept a secret for the last 40 years. Oh, my God. Let me tell you, mothers know everything, everything. I know. You're not a mom, are you? Or are you? No, I'm not a mom. Okay, a mom. me neither. Not yet. You're not, you're not either. Yeah. Working uh, on know, it. They, they know everything. They know everything. Yeah. They know everything. And um, and sometimes my mom comes on and, uh, you know, talks to people. When people don't have a mom, my mom subs on as their mom. My mom is like quintessential oh. Jewish mother from the Bronx. And uh, and it's, it's, it's truly so, it's true. Adam Rippon told this hilarious story of... Um, getting up at 6.30 a.m. to use the family computer to download stuff from dicks.com, which wasn't the sporting goods store. I can't. And his mom's like, he'll be called his mother, and his mom's like, yeah, I know, Adam. Like, one time you're in the computer froze, and you're like, I was just doing dicks. And he's like, I don't remember that. And she's like, yeah, I remember that. I told you to unplug the computer and restart it. Oh, I my mean, God. It's just like, it is, and these are just such primal stories. I love you know? it. And it's, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's really fun because you get to see people being vulnerable, but then you get to see people with their mothers, which is a whole other side of somebody. It's a whole different dimension right there. <laughs> it's a whole other, it's a whole other side. It changes. Our relationships with our mothers are very interesting. Is your mom, is your mom around? No, not my mom. She okay. passed away in 2016, but okay. whoa, she was a character. Where's your mother from? Argentina. Argentina. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm okay. Latina. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. I know. I knew that. I just didn't know. I wasn't sure where she was from. But yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, did you tell her things? Not all, but I did share stuff. Yeah. And she had an opinion for everything. Of course. Of course she did. Yes. Of course she did. Did yeah. she comment? Did she comment on your physical appearance all the time? All the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. La Graciela, I don't want to tell you, but your butt is really big, but I don't want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Oh, she was crazy. You know what she did when I was younger? I was like 19. And I was like, I'm not sure if I want to be like a professional competitive swimmer or continue to be in college, whatever. She says, listen, Graciela, I think you would be a great hooker. She said that too? Yes. And I'm like, wait, what? She's like, yeah, Graciela, listen, you have a lot of energy. And men really like you. I don't know why, but they like you. So you would be great. I think that's that's what you, you know, but She's not that what I well. should do. But yeah, that's she encouraged me and she told me I would be a great hooker. That stuck with me forever. Did you ever become a hooker? No. She's so smart. I met her no, on yeah. a dating site. I met her on an app. Oh, my God. Which oh. one? Uh, it's called her. It's like a queer dating app. Very and, cool. And she's the one. She is the one. Now I have to call you like Graciela. Now I like that. Even Graciela. <laughs> Graciela. She's the one who said, go leave, go leave your executive job and do don't tell my mother full time. Because I'd been doing it for almost, right, now it's almost a decade. We did a live show. We've had like really amazing, like Tracy Ellis Ross or Lance Bass or Ali Wong, you know, people that I just, you know, love, just wonderful people. And she said, and then I was doing my exec job, right? And I was over at DreamWorks TV and, you know, making shows. And she's like, you can do the job that, you know, you know how to do well and you've been successful at, or you can do the job that you love and think of how much more successful you'll be at the thing you absolutely love that you've only been putting part time into. And I said, you're absolutely right. And I, and I left and, and that's when I'm like, I'm doing this, I'm doing it full time. Like I am actually doing what I'm here to do full time. And I've had enough like trauma and crap in my life that I am at a point where like, 
I like to own what I was once ashamed of. And I, and I love helping yeah. other people do it. It is, it is a joy to watch someone go from eh to laughing at the thing that they didn't even want to talk about. Yes. It's and a that gift. Elevates, it's, a, it's a gift to be able to do that. To somebody absolutely. Somebody. Not only elevates speaking of frequency, it not yeah. only elevates the person who's doing it, it elevates the audience. Totally. It takes on a journey and it yep. releases and it heals. Ab absolutely. Um, I don't think I told you this, but every year for four years, um, I've done a special with Audible for Pride Month. Happy Pride, by the way. Oh, happy Pride. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Okay, it's June. Happy Pride. So every year, like I co-host with somebody and we get like queer celebrities to tell a story. And it's always been live, right? Yeah. But this year it was all this year it was all recorded in people's closets. So this year we did all it, me and Alexandra Billings hosted it. Alexandra from Wicked on Broadway and Transparent yeah. and the Connors and I just amazing. Wow. Amazing. I love her so much. Um, she was my teacher actually a long time ago. I love her. And we got people like Harvey Guillen from What We Do in the Shadows. Do you watch that show? Mm -mm. Oh my God, Grace! You have to watch what we do in the really. Shadows. Where is it? I'm, I'm... Uh, FX. He plays Guillermo. Oh, well, it's Guillermo. the TV show based on the movie What We Do in the Shadows by Taika Waititi, and he plays Guillermo, and he's like the assistant to all the uh, vampires. It's a vampire show. It's hilarious. Oh, anyway, wow. he's the best. Harvey Guillen, and then Bianca Del Rio, and um, I know her. She's from New Orleans. Yes. I don't know her personally, but I know yes. of her. I mean, she was famous in New Orleans way back. She told a great story about, you know, winning drag race and then getting all these gigs. And one was in a remodel pizza hut in Madison, Wisconsin, but they lost her luggage. So it's like, what do you do as a drag queen without your shit? Like, so she literally had to go to Walmart and buy women's clothes for this gig in Wisconsin. Like no. straight up bought. Yes. It was really great. It was great. Um, and then like, uh, who else? Deanna Reasonover from NCIS. And it's just all queer people telling true stories. And that, and I will plug that because I'm very proud of it. I spent this whole year working on it. It's on Audible. It's called Owning It. It's audible.com slash owning it. And if you're an Audible member, it's free. But it's it's specifically queer people. And I know you uh, relate to this, but like if... Like the, the the stories I'm most interested in hearing and I guess helping people tell are like LGBTQIA folks, people of color and differently abled people. People who's, who you can't go to like, you know, it's not like you're gonna go to the comedy store and see those people any night of the week. That's, those are the that. stories. I love that. You know, cause like we've always been a little on the, a little on the margins, a little on the fringe, a little like watching, watching things. <laughs> Oh, yeah. how do I fit in? You know, what do I do to talk <laughs> like them or walk like them or dress like them? Right? How do yeah. I do this? And so we have comedy because it's so it's so embarrassing. All of it. It's so embarrassing. It's so silly. It, it is. If you if you look at this reality, it's so silly. How it's all human construct. You know yeah. what's what's pretty, what's not pretty, what's you know what fit, how to fit into a certain group, yeah. and how to, it's all human construct. So totally. it's like. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? You totally. Know? Yeah. Totally. Right. I mean, I, it's it's just like yeah, like these stories from you know folks who've been some way on, on the margin of in some yeah. way, right? It's like that's the perspective that's the most interesting because no matter who we are, we all feel like we're on the margin. We all do. I think everybody. I think everybody, yeah. even the ones that fit whatever they need to fit, I think they feel insecure. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, um, but I love that you're giving people on the margins like myself, you know, uh, an opportunity uh, to yeah. tell their stories because we need to tell our stories. Yeah. And I think we also need to hear stories like we this. need to hear, you know? Yeah. It's part yeah. of the healing process. I think yeah. artists are healers. A hundred and ten percent. It's been so cool, like, what people... Did this show come out of the pandemic, or did you start it before the pandemic? Well, before the pandemic, it was live. It was a stand-up yeah. comedy show. It was the female point of view, and the funny female point of view on relationships. And I toured it and, you know, supported women. And uh, and then with the pandemic, I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And I was like, let's do the Green Room Edition, where we talk. Awesome. You know, like, we're in the Green Room and just... Awesome. You know. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. It's been <laughs> it's fun. fun the coolest stuff like has come out of COVID like that you could create something like this, you know, and 
have people join. They don't have to live in LA or Southern California. They could be everywhere, anywhere. Absolutely. Do you think it's important to be in LA though? If you want to. I do. Yeah, I think so. Too. I mean, it's so weird. Is it important? Yes. But I think it's less important because I think like, you mean if you're an actor or a stand up or both or all of that, oh, anywhere in the entertainment business. Uh, I think it's probably mm -hmm. less important now than it ever was mm -hmm. to be New York or LA because like, I think for most acting gigs now, it's all tapes that people are sending in. Everything's on Zoom. I mean, I think LA is like cool because it's like such a bastion of creativity. New oh, York also God. great. New York's also yes. great. And we want to be around that creative energy. Exactly. Like you want to be around other people and other mm -hmm. creatives and, and hey, you want to do this show or hey, you know, you want to take this class. I mean, now though, every, all the classes are Zoom. I mean, it's really leveled the playing field. Everything, yes, which which is great because it gives you an option to do things in a different way. Like you're totally. doing your podcast, you know, in a different way. It's a different format, and it add you added the moms, you know, and then you can do the live shows, and it's a different experience. I've wanted people who've done. I've wanted people on the Audible special that I could never have because we always shot it live in LA. Like yeah. Angelica Ross from Pose and American Horror Story was on it last year um, because we had to record some when COVID was happening. And she was in, you know, Georgia. You know, this year, this year, someone was in Texas. Someone was in New York. Um, someone was in South Carolina. Like that, that never could ha that never can happen. So it's just, yeah, now you get to actually have artists from wherever they are. And that's been cool. So that's what, been really cool. What is Absolutely. a goal that you have for Don't Tell My Mother? What is something that, where would you like to take it? That's a great question. Um, there's something that I've been working on that I have to actually sit and really do, which is, I've been, so this is just one thing, but um, the book series of like, Don't Tell My Mother, Don't Tell My, so stories, Don't Tell My Mother, Don't Tell My Kid, don't tell my shrink, don't tell my mother-in-law. <laughs> and it would be like an anthology of, of different people's stories. So that's one thing. But I've been wanting to do the the live show, the the TV version of it for so long. Kind of like um, kind of like a mix of remember Deaf Comedy Jam? Yes. Right? And um, and, you know, and then you get people that are known and people that are like less known. But to me, the idea that like, I mean, I'm I'm thrilled with the podcast because we get to have people who aren't in LA hear it. Um, and it's cool. We have like a, a lot of listeners in Australia. Super weird. That like, is so cool. I, love why. It. I don't know. Um, and Chicago, which is great. But um, but, you know, but yeah, I mean, I would love to do the 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 TV show of it, you know, and I don't know if it would be I would host it or I don't I don't know how it would look. It's funny because I come from scripted. So this non scripted right. version, all my stuff is scripted, all my all my TVs and movies. are. So this non scripted thing is still something I have to figure out, like, what's the best version of it? I don't kind know the like, answer. Like, I, I would say kind of like a comedy show where you have, mm -hmm. you know, the, the MC feature headliner kind of format. We have like three strong. Yeah. You know, like a comedy show, like a comedy yep. special. Totally. And that's what I've, we've been thinking about that. Like, is, exactly. Is it a is it a comedy? Is it a Netflix special? Right. Where it's like, you know, you know, you have uh, some newcomers and some kind of like established people. And something that I do with. Uh, something that I do with everyone is um, for the live show, we work on the stories in advance. You know, we, oh, we really, really craft them. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because there's because I need to know 100 percent, but the audience doesn't need to know 100 percent. You know, a celebrity has to be comfortable with what they're going to share. I love that. You know, so we go back and forth and we work on it together. For the podcast, it's much more, much more laid back. More relaxed. Know? Yeah, uh, totally. Because there's also editing. So if someone's like, oh, my God, I didn't mean to say that name, that that guy. And I was like, it's fine. We'll, you know, we'll cut it. But um, but it is. And so that's fun, too, that you can have the podcast be so much more. We Constance Zimmer, we weren't going to call her mom. We were only calling her daughter. That's who we were calling. And then yeah. she's like, oh, um, I, I, you know, I should ask my mom. And I was like, yeah, I should call her. And she's like, should I? I was like, call her. And it was so unexpected for everyone. And that that surprise is such a joy, I think. I love it. Surprise. Yes, absolutely. Um, 
And you know, here Joe is saying, include audience participation and don't tell my mother. Just an idea. I, I love it. Joe, what would you what would you want, Joe? I love this guy, Joe. I know he's awesome. And here's another thing he's saying, comedy oh, what is would you? Oh, yeah. he wants mental health. Oh, that's great, I work Joe. in healthcare myself and comedy has definitely helped. Joe, I, I so agree. And if you think of things, go to the podcast, listen, if you think of things that you'd want audience participation, like right now for Pride Month, I'm having people call into a Google voice number to, to tell me their first queer crush. We're just trying that. I but, love it. But Joe, tell tell me if there's something that you think could be fun. I, I love that idea. Love it. Yeah, that's that's great. I love it. And you know who does that? Actually, now I'm remembering. Um, what's his name? The, the Blue Collar Tour guy? The who? I forgot. The blue oh. collar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I can't oh, remember because uh, I, I don't watch it too much. But um, but they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, know I know Ron about. White because I, I love his um, his stuff. Ron White is so bad. I mean, like bad in a good way. Um, so he's the only one I watch from those guys. But I watched one of the comedy specials. And in the end, they're all sitting down and the audience asked them questions about whatever they talked about or whatever they want to know about them. And I thought that was so cool and it was fun. I love that. Mm -hmm. That was on, that was on which show? Uh, the um, blue collar comedy yeah. tour. I mean, God, getting an audience involved is the most fun. It's been really fun to hear people's queer crushes when they call know, the Google number. It's adorable. <laughs> the last person was like Andy McDowell from four, two, uh, four weddings and a funeral. I'm like, oh, wow. I, I don't know you, but I love you. That is the cutest thing. Who was your first? Who was your first crush? Oh my gosh! I don't. I honestly don't even remember. Um, who was it? I think it was like the older guys because I always liked the older guys. Uh, <laughs> I know you still. Do you still like older guys? Yeah, I like older guys. Well, not anymore because now older is dead. But uh, <laughs> I'm not going there. Um, but it was. Um, Oh my God, Roger Moore! <laughs> Roger Moore from Arthur? Is no, that... from like um, wait, from Pink Oh Seven. Okay, hold uh, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's British. He's like because uh, you remember I grew up in Argentina, so the yes. TV shows were like a little bit. He died in 2017. Um, he, the Saint of the. <laughs> <laughs> So in energy, you have like like old shows, you know, and that's oh, what man. I watched. And I remember James Bond. Yes, here's Joe saying. I love it. James Bond. James yes. Bond. I know, and I loved Wait. him. Oh my god, <laughs> that was my first crush. And he's dead. He's dead now. He's dead now. Okay, okay. I love you. Okay. you. That's no, an older man for me. You know that book with the dinosaurs, and it's like all my friends are dead. Like all my crushes <laughs> are dead. Um, my first crush. My first crush. I think my first crush was on Jason Rosenberg. Really? Who, yeah, I was in middle, I was in elementary school with him. Yeah, he really liked Superman. Like in hindsight, he was a little weird, but yeah, yeah, Jason That's Rosenberg. So that is. So he was cute. really into Superman. Like really into Superman. I love it. Yeah. Like, I think you can have crushes on like like I'm not gay, but I, I do have like women crushes of course they are hot and they're beautiful and i'm not you know i think i'm like 10 percent gay maybe but i don't think that's possible of course it is it is I think it? it's more i think it's more unlikely that people are only straight or only oh. gay i don't think that's you'd be lying to yourself if you said that so so i think like yeah. it's just it's, i think it's such a spectrum i mean like i yeah, totally. i feel that way totally a hundred percent yeah, I mean, I think maybe women feel more comfortable being open about that than I don't men. Care. Yeah, and I don't care what people think, so I, I really don't care. Um, <laughs> oh, mean, look at Joe. Talk. His crush was Drew Barrymore. Drew, Joe, oh. wait, where is Joe from? Where does Joe live? Uh, Joe, where do you live? And here he's saying my absolute first crush was a girl. Ah! In my older brother's high school class. I totally... Oh my God, Joe! Did you ever have a crush on a teacher? Oh, good. Grace, question. did you yes. ever have a crush on a teacher? I yeah, I did in college, and he was gay. <laughs> <laughs> what did he wait? What did he teach? What did he teach? He taught history of literature because I have a degree in his art history. 
So he was brilliant and he liked me. So he like, we went out like for lunch and stuff. And I was like in love. He was gay. No hope there. Yeah. But I was madly in love with him. I had a huge, huge crush on my Spanish teacher. You did? Oh my God. Yes. Mrs. What was her name? Mrs. Gold? No, not Mrs. Mrs. Greenberg. Mrs. Greenberg. Oh. Huge crush on Mrs. Greenberg. Where was Mrs. Greenberg from? Middle school. Oh, oh, Queens. Like Queens. country. Yeah. She was she was American or oh no, Mrs. Greenberg was very American. Very oh, okay. Okay. Mrs. Greenberg was like a Jew with like frosted tips and but I was but like her heels always matched her skirt and like I would come in for like you know to conjugate verbs. It was a conjugal visit, you know. <laughs> That's good. I love but that. I, I did like oh I was so into her. I can tell. I, I was so into her. But I heard her husband was really mean. That's what I heard. I don't know why. Hello. I know. I was like, what happened, Miss Greenberg? Why, why are people mean to their significant others? Why be with them if they're going to be uh, mean Why? Them? Why? Yeah, exactly. She was She was a major, major crush of mine. Major. Oh. Major. I love it. Uh, so here is Joe. She, he's saying she, she taught, taught science, science and, and art. art. My teacher I had a crush on. Her name was Cynthia. Oh. Joe, you were on a first name basis with Cynthia? <laughs> Yo. No, no, no. He might have been. I love Joe. Where is Joe? Joe, where are you from? Where are you coming from? Coming oh, to us wait. From. He actually mentioned something. Minnesota. Oh, cool, Joe. Joe, I like Minnesota. Eight. I wonder. Okay. I wonder if Joe's from Minneapolis. I don't know. Where Where are you from, Joe? Um, Let's see. Here he says uh, he was not on a first name basis. With oh. <laughs> so, any advice that you have to new or aspiring content creators and producers? Yes, totally. Um, maybe this goes without saying, but make your make your own stuff. Yeah, because everybody that I see that's so there's a new show on Showtime called Z Way. I think it's on Showtime, and it's a woman who started this Instagram. Um, show during the pandemic mm. where she would and it, it's this it's this fantastic show and it was picked up by Showtime and now it's like a big show wow and, yeah and you know people want to work with people who are making things so yeah. so I don't believe in like shop your script around like literally like get you know if you if you're a screenwriter like write a short not a feature not a feature write a short and mm -hmm. get that short up on its feet you know shoot it with your iphone you know get it up on its feet but make it you know you know create your your weekly ig live or your facebook you know live show or your or your podcast or mm -hmm. you know if you're an actor um you know be in everything and, and every be in anything and everything but make something that's yours you know, if you're not a great writer, have a friend who is a good writer, write a short and star in that short. Because, right. because make because we have to make things that showcase us. That's just the truth. I, agree. I, I, I think kind of gone are the days and I, I think because of social media, gone are the days of like your agent or your manager. And, and that's a thing of whether, you know, you have one or you want to get one, yeah. but getting you work like we get ourselves work. A hundred percent. Yes. Yeah, you know, it's like we get ourselves work. I remember even just for the Audible special, I've, I've been doing Don't Tell My Mother for so long. And, you know, we always have a very queer audience, but we would always do a coming out show. And I remember uh, always, it's always so fun and it's always so queer. And I remember uh, someone t telling me, I was thinking, oh, I should pitch it to this place that sometimes pulls, uses stories. They, they, they get our recordings and sometimes they use it in other shows. And it was a comedy kind of audio thing. And I, I pitched them this and then they were bought by Audible. And now I've been doing it for four years, but it was, all, I was like, do I pitch it? It's kind of, I don't know. There's not a lot of time before I'm doing this show. It feels weird. And then the other thing is like, sh suit up and show up, like do your best work. Because everybody knows somebody. And, you know, look, I've been guilty. I've Sometimes I've been wonderful to work with and sometimes I've been tough to work with. And, like, we always want to show up 100% for our 50%. Yeah. And, and, and if we mess up, because creativity is emotional, if we mess up and maybe we're, we got too much about something or too difficult or too 
whatever it is, right? Who knows? There's so many things where, you know, we're not, we're not doing finances, right? We're, we're doing art right. and we care about it. Then just own your mistake quickly. As soon as you possibly can. Hey, I'm so sorry. I got defensive about this or, you know what? Mm -hmm. I should have, I should have, your idea was a great idea and I'm sorry. I was really sticking to mine. I, I would really like to try yours and I, I hope you'll forgive me. That's that. a great, that's great advice. Absolutely. You no. Know? Yeah. Cause it's easy to, 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 it's easy. It's easy for me to get stuck in, stuck in with my pop screen to get stuck <laughs> in an idea, you know, but the truth is there's not one way to do it. There's never one way to do it. Not at all. And um, I recently optioned a show and the producer is giving me notes and stuff. And because it is semi autobiographical. Very thank cool. You. Thank you. That's great. Um, it's you know, the notes. Sometimes I'm like, Oh my God, you know, like it's hard to accept them. Yeah. It's um, hard. It's very hard to accept them. And, but And you can push back. I mean, pushing back is, is, you know, okay to do also like, it's just about doing it, I think, gracefully. Absolutely, yes. Like, hey, I really, you know, it's like, hey, I really hear your note. Um, the solution that you're suggesting doesn't feel like it's bumping me, it doesn't feel authentic, or it's just, I feel like I could even plus that. How about this solution instead? Mm -hmm. and, and come up with a couple of ideas. I like that. Right. And, and I think it's just we can't always say no or someone just doesn't want to work with us. But it's like and now I just I have to remember too. like, I'm sorry, I'm talking so much, but I do have a lot to say about this. because yeah, probably, This is a, this is a podcast. You're supposed great. To talk I mean, about so, it. Yeah, so like I just and, and you have to know when are you when are you the hired gun? OK, when are you hired to do a comedy gig? You're hired to do it. Right. When are right. you hired to write a thing and you're hired to do it? Or when is it yours? When is it your baby? Because I've learned that if I'm hired to do something, as much as I get invested and I get so invested, you know, I have to remember that I'm being paid to do a job. And the person who's paying me makes the final decision. Mm -hmm. You know, almost like they're the studio. Exactly. And if that's the case, then I can state my case of like, oh, I really feel like that or that line really does belong or I really don't like that take or something. But in the end, I now say, you know what? I trust you. I mm -hmm. trust you. And you are the blah, blah, blah. You you make the, the final decision. That's and correct. if it's my thing, look, I on the podcast, I have a team of people. I still have to work with a team of people. And I think sometimes I, I can get, you know, oh, maybe I know best. But then I have to realize, yeah. no, actually, uh, these are very talented people who have really great ideas. And Nikki, maybe your way is just your way, but this right. other way is actually breathes more light into it or feels more airy or is more fun or someone that maybe doesn't have your perspective will understand that part. Absolutely. Yeah. Like trust, trusting the team, you know, and trusting the process. Number one. Yeah. And if you can't the trust the other people, then it's impossible to because you get stuck on your own shit. Right. And trust yeah. is hard. It's hard. It's hard for me. Yeah. It's really yeah. hard. You know, I it's like, it is because you were in like high positions, you know, it's tough. It's tough yeah. Tough. But I, you know, uh, thankfully with the podcast, I really like the team. And so I'm, I'm learning to like loosen my grip and just be like, oh, great. This person will take something off my plate and they're really smart. And, and something I've like really, been thinking about recently and like putting into practice is so it's like if you ever make a suggestion creatively and then someone shoots you down yes and then you, <laughs> you don't want to and then you don't feel empowered to like you don't really want to yeah kind of feel yeah so we've all felt that right yeah so I realized if I'm shooting an idea down no matter what with the doesn't even matter it could be with my my job developing shows or anything that I'm doing you know then I'm not, I'm not empowering someone to, to be their best. True. And that is shitty. Yeah. You know, and I want, I, I want to empower people to be excited about working with me to feel that they have something to offer because I'm working with them because I feel like they do have something to offer. Mm -hmm. So sometimes just yes is, is, is a great answer. Yeah. It's a great answer. And like, I want people to feel 
uh, creatively like, yes, it's in the flow. Because I know for me, when I get shut down creatively, which I worked at a studio for a million years, that happens all the time. It's, it, it, it is not inspiring. No, it's not. It's not. I, I like to do the yes and. <laughs> you're saying no, but you yes and it. Like, yes, and how about this? So you're not shutting the other person. That's how I write with my partners. If they shut me down, it's on them. But I try I try not to, but sometimes I do. You know, it's like, no, right. I know. It's like it comes out of your mouth and you're like, oh, shit. Right. But I think that's such a great way to look at it. Like, yeah, yeah it, y yes, and someone. And everyone here knows, like, yes, and. That's the improv way of doing things, yeah. you know? Yeah. You always want to plus something. Absolutely. So, and then you can say no by plussing it, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, they, that's my MO. They say the best idea is like, you said, say, so you say an idea and then I say, oh, I thought you, I heard, I thought you, I thought I heard, or I thought you were going to say blank. And then you're like, oh, well, wait a minute. And now we've plussed each other. Exactly. That's, I think that's probably the most positive way it's our ego. I think that sometimes get in, gets in the way. Like we think we oh, know yeah. best and we think we, you know, we have more experience or more, whatever. It's all ego based. I think every time we humans yeah. conflict, it's all ego based. Yeah, And I think a lot of it is fear. Like I'm it's afraid fear. it's not going to work. In my mouth. Yes. I'm afraid yes. it's not going to work. I'm afraid it's going to be bad. I'm afraid it's not going to be funny. I'm afraid. it's like, I get it. I get that. Yeah, of course. You just yeah. have to trust, you know? Yeah. Trust the process. Well, let me tell tell people where they can listen to your podcast. Oh, okay. So listen to Don't Tell My Mother with Nikki Levy, uh, Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, anywhere you get your podcasts. And then, um, and it's free, of course. And then check out uh, the Audible special for Pride Month if you want to be, you know, celebrating Pride Month or you're an awesome ally. And that's Audible, it's on Audible only. So it's audible.com slash owning it. And it's really fun. I will say it's probably my favorite special that, that we've done. It's, I it's love really it. fun. I'm going to definitely put it on my um, Amazon. Audible, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Well, um, and I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here with you. And Joe, oh, I'm so happy to be yeah. here with Joe. Bye, <laughs> Graciela. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you for tuning in.